Hi, this is Randy Randall of No Age and host of the podcast Hyphen It with Randy Randall. I want to welcome our newest sponsor of the show, DistroKid. DistroKid helps musicians get their music on all the major streaming platforms and artists keep 100% of their royalties. Hyphenate listeners get 30% off at distrokid.com backslash VIP backslash hyphenate. Again, that's distrokid.com backslash VIP backslash H-Y-P-H-E-N-A-T-E. Go get your music streaming everywhere now. I said it at some point. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in your day cycle. I guess it's only 24 hours. You're probably in one of those 24 hours, <laughs> regardless of wherever you find yourself. Uh, I wish you well, and thank you for tuning in to Hyphenate with me, Randy Randall, the podcast where I interview people who have done more than one thing with their life. I guess most people have probably done more than one thing. I should probably refine that definition better. <laughs> it's, you know, the podcast where people uh, talk to people who've had an interesting career, played in many bands maybe, or more, worn many hats throughout their career, or even at the same time have done different creative pursuits simultaneous with each other, or in some ways uh, parasitically uh, ping-ponging off of each other. Their interest in one creative pursuit may inspire them to the other, or when they get burned out on one, then they get excited about the other one. <laughs> this is the funniest intro. Um, well, today, I think I'm so giddy and so so silly because I'm interviewing an old friend, uh, Mr. Kip Ullhorn, from the Red Scare, Cloudline Canyon, Panthers. Um, we discussed many of his super cool bands. Um, uh, the Red Scare does have a reissue coming out on Solid Brass Records. So you do yourself a favor and go buy the uh, reissues and um, listen to it on streaming, which we also get into. I think is the first time the Red Scare catalog will be issued for streaming. It has not yet been out there and been co- codified and canonized as music that is available for all uh, people to hear via streaming networks, straight to your headphones. Um, but yeah, Kip and I are very loose and very silly. I think this is the second or third podcast I had done in a day, or it's the second or third interview I had done in one day. I don't know why they all kind of piled onto each other this day, but I think I was very um, silly, and I was giving Kip a hard time because I've known him for a long time, even though we hadn't talked in a while. It uh, instantly put me back into uh, being a goofball punk kid, you know, 20 something years old, just dicking around backstage with other bands and like-minded friends backstage and being silly and drinking tall boys and church parking lots. Um, so I appreciate that. There are some issues with, uh, the audio quality. I think at some point our, our feed even went down. For some reason his, his microphone, uh, sounded very, um, garbled or it would get kind of like glitchy this might be a new thing i don't know i'm trying to figure out maybe i'm just more noticing all the uh technical difficulties i could have these i could have had all these glitches and tech technical technical difficulties this entire run of this podcast but maybe just now this many uh, months into it i'm starting to notice them more and be like no oh, why does that so bad i'm doing all the editing and looking after the audio and go back and hear like that was not good but this one was good this one the interview is good the content is good it's hilarious and funny and kip is a great guy and very smart and i give him a hard time probably harder time than i should have in review once again um but uh but yeah at some point it drops out so just as a heads up to everybody out there who's sensitive to audio quality inconsistencies there are several throughout this interview you have been warned this is your trigger warning for anybody with overt sensitivity to audio quality changes um i did my best to clean things up and to kind of make it still seem uh, coherent where it is but um i love kip and i love um talking with him and catching up with him and just kind of going over how many friends we have in common and all the weird funny sliding doors moments that um you know that you could share with somebody in life and i think you know playing music in the early aughts was a funny weird place and there were lots of funny weird opportunities and things and this uh, conversation has stuck with me uh, long after i feel like i've had conversations about this conversation which again i will also do with uh aaron farley here uh, next monday in retrospects may i'll get more into that there but um yeah so quality 
not, up and down, varying quality of audio. Um, content, always 110. Very good content of this interview. And what else do we get into? Oh, yeah, Red Scare Records, reissued, solid brass records. Go buy them all. Go stream them. You will love it. And, um, oh yeah, I was in a band before No Age called Wives, and that was something that uh, we get into as well, because I think that's where I first met him. So that is all we have on that side. So go listen to the interview. I'll be back. Kip Yulhorn, what's happening? How you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I am a professional broadcaster, Kip. Do I not know. laugh at me. I know. No, I know it's, what, it's I know impressive. what I'm doing. I come in hot. <laughs> I've been doing this for like six months now. Yeah. I know what I'm doing. Oh, is it? Is it that? It's only six months? Oh, oh God. I don't even know. I've stopped counting. It feels yeah. It feels like, yeah, it was summertime over the summer. And I guess we're coming up on summer. So maybe closer to yeah. eight months, 10 months, something like that. Yeah. It feels yeah. Like, I'm I, like I'm like one of those those dads. 40, yeah. 42 weeks, 80, <laughs> 89 uh, months, little right, child. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's always <laughs> funny when it goes past like 12 months and people, well, no, I think it makes, it makes sense up until like two years, right? Because you can say like 18 months seems like, you know. Like a thing yeah, that people say. I still call bullshit on that. <laughs> after yeah, after after going through it twice with two kids, yeah. it's like yeah, they're under one, they're over yeah. one, they're they're under one or they're one year olds, they're two year olds, they're yeah. three year olds. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's it. I mean, if it's under one, you can say, oh, there's six months, or yeah. oh, this is a new baby, it's only three months. Don't fucking touch them. Yeah. Well, there's they're still they're still like susceptible to everything. Their head's still soft. Yeah. You know, I think that's what it is. But I always the under one you can use months. Yeah. I have this picture above my computer of him. Uh, uh, being like given a bath in a sink at South by Southwest, like in the hotel room. Amazing. And it's just, wow. it's that, I don't know, for some reason, I like, I always just trip out on like how long ago that was. Yeah. Right? But it doesn't you know, feel that long here, here's the, you here's the, the cliche. Pictures. It goes so fast, right? <laughs> <laughs> the days yeah. are long and the years are fast. Yeah. 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 No, I, I'm with you. Yeah, we did a bath with my oldest, who's 10. I said, um, when he was real little, we played uh, noise pop in San mm-hmm. Francisco. Yeah. And uh, we stayed at a, at a crappy motel, like right there near the venues and like the Tenderloin. And um, and yeah, we gave him a little bath in the sink there. And I, I yeah, my wife and I always reflect on that. It was fun. We're still, yeah. It's still that like yeah. the baby moon kind of phase of it all or whatever. I don't know. The baby, yeah. phase, you know, the glow of just like, wow, I can't believe we're new parents. Like this is so cool. Yeah. I still fit into all my skinny jeans though. And I can still go play shows. <laughs> so it's like, hasn't fully kicked in. you like, you get the, you kind of have the false, um, right. The false, uh, like, um, confidence of being a dad when you're like, you're yeah. not a fucking dad. You're a new dad. Yeah. You don't walk around like you're actually a dad. You don't know anything. Yeah. You, 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 all you do is, all you do is change diapers. <laughs> Not, you still, you still, uh, you still explain everything to everybody as if it's like something that they would never have any, any, no one ever knows how this works. Right. Do you know they only drink milk? <laughs> you don't even eat solid foods yet. No shit. Oh, wow. Yeah. Look, at, look at you. You're yeah. world's best dad over here. This is great. <laughs> Just give them the yeah. award guys. We found that we found the guy. Yeah. You know, it's really hard having a baby. They don't sleep that much. Well, they sleep a lot, but just not like through the night. Yeah. Oh man. I got so, I don't know how we're going down the rabbit hole now, but yeah, I got so yeah. lucky with that <laughs> because he, really? he, he started sleeper? sleeping through the night, <sighs> like at one month old. Motherfucker. We, yeah. Up till five years old, we were tortured. Wow. We were like held in some kind of like black site, <laughs> kind of sleep deprivation um, hostage situation. <laughs> our, our oldest was like five years old. He would finally sleep through the night. We honestly just lost our minds. Yeah. But the second one, very good sleeper. Yeah. We were at the point where like we wouldn't believe it when people said like, oh no, my child sleeps through the night. You're like, yeah. fuck you. Yeah. It's not true. Yeah. You're just saying this. You're ghosting yeah. us. Like this is everybody's going through what we're going through. Yeah. Like, we were fucking like three years old. It was just like, we couldn't we couldn't do it we had what we had that experience it's yeah very very i'm sure sh- uh, i guarantee if i'd had another one that it um you know it would have been like a karma yeah karma yeah, yeah, yeah yeah it would have been <laughs> would have been payback 
Oh so. my god! Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we can keep talking about being dads for for an hour. But I, I want to definitely catch up could do on, that. Uh, you, <laughs> I have done it. I do it all the time. Um, but you have a, a reissue, a Red Scare reissue coming out. Yeah. And that was the auspices on on which we uh, we we meet here today to to discuss yeah. this and promote it more than anything. Everybody go to uh, solidbrass.com, solidblastrecords.com, and buy the new uh, Red Scare reissue. But tell tell me a little bit about. I guess I, I want to hear the whole story, but, but let's, yeah. let's, let's put a highlighter on, on Red Scare for a minute. Yeah. What, uh, what, what's going on with the reissue? What's the story? How'd you come to this place and what are you guys doing different for it? And- um, honestly, we were so bad at uh, <laughs> doing any, like we didn't have like the archivist in the band. I was actually, okay. you know, it's funny before I, I go into that, like I get, this is that, that was really the only musical project that you and I didn't know each other at the time. Like I feel I met you right. right yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, Solid Brass Panthers, got into, right? Yeah. yeah. Panthers and yeah. wives. <laughs> yeah. I wanna get I want I wanna go through all of that. I wanna get that, but I wanna make sure we hit yeah. it at the top. Yeah. Let's yeah, get yeah. a reissue. Um yeah. so yeah, Chuck Chuck used to run I think the first time I met Chuck from Solid Brass was he used to run a label called Sound on Sound. Um if I I hope I got that right. Um he lived in the Bay area forever and ended up putting out a new brutalism record, which was, uh, our drummer, Matt's other, other band. Um, and then, yeah, we didn't do anything with the red scare, like in terms of like, it wasn't even streaming, um, until uh, probably the pandemic. And so, um, yeah, Chuck contacted us, him and Jason. And, um, I don't know if you know, Justin, do you remember that band thumbnail? It was like a hardcore band from the nineties that was on file 13, um, which was like a little rock label put out like Chino Horde and I'm sure like stuff that, you know, but, um, um, anyway, give me too much credit. I don't know if I'm that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) anyway, uh, Justin from thumbnail is part of solid brass, Jason Pearson and Chuck. And, um, yeah, it's just been great. They've, they've helped us kind of like, excavate all of the bits and pieces of yeah all of like that that period of time and it's been like kind of amazing to see all of this like new content or like we found like a um like brian rotinger had like rolls and rolls of film um he he actually um you probably know this but originally brian rotinger put out the the two red scare lps on handheld heart and trouble yeah. man did the the cds as was like the custom of that <laughs> era as was the sound of the day <laughs> tie an onion to your belt yeah, yeah. that's amazing yeah. But, but yeah brian's good at, at an as at being an archivist yeah. i'm sure he's got it that makes sense he would have photos and everything yeah he's, yeah that's, that's incredible yeah it's crazy i mean like if you can imagine i mean it was like a time capsule so, yeah. um, and, but, but it's interesting too, in the sense, just the way music works now is like, if it's not up on streaming, mm. it doesn't really, it's like, it never really happened. It's like, you, yeah. you have to have some kind of digital record of it or digital like presence. Yeah. I don't know band, why fill in the history. Yeah. Like I, I, I don't know why we don't, I feel like most bands have that person that kind of like, you know, documents things for posterity and we just, none of it. I, yeah. Too cool. You're living <laughs> in the moment. <laughs> Man, we'll we'll call it that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and then so let's start at the beginning. Was 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 yeah. is, was Red Scare your first musical project, or where did you grow up, and how did you first kind of you know um, music? Yeah, I grew I grew up in Memphis, um, and I think it was really like my second thing that I did. I was, and I, I was in a band called Superstar when I was in high school, which was for just for the sake of brevity, probably pretty similar to the California evergreen. Um, okay. Or that best case scenario. Um, <laughs> That's what we're going for. <laughs> probably. Um, me and this guy that is now um, in a band on Numero called everyone asked about you. Um, and then when I moved to Knoxville for college, we started the red scare. So, um, cool. Yeah, one kind of bled into the other, I guess. So, and and then what was what were some of those early influences, or how did you sort of you know get inspired? Yeah, yeah. On? Was it just kind of the friend group, or yeah. 
Yeah. Um, really? I mean, the reason that I mentioned everyone asked about you is because the guy that, um, his name is Matt, uh, Matt Bradley. Um, he was a few years older than me and kind of played that like older brother showing me about cool shit kind of thing. Um, I think like early high school, I was like more into like shoegaze and the Smiths and, um, just, you know, stuff like that. And then found out about minor threat and black flag, probably through skateboarding channels. And then, um, yeah, when I, when I met Matt, I was like, probably in 10th grade and he was, uh, or maybe 11th grade. He was like a, a, um, freshman in college had just moved to Memphis for college. And so he, I think at the time was like finding out, um, about like just DIY stuff, like in particular, like the gravity stuff we both were really into. I think, I think we've lost each other. Hey, that was so weird. Hey. The internet went down. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. About that. I don't know what happened. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, my screen went black and I came back and then you were still talking. I'm like, oh, wait, did he not know I was, went down? <laughs> so, we'll have to, yeah. We'll, I'll have to figure out later what happened. I think we can probably just pick up from there. Um, okay. Where do you, <laughs> where, Matt, where do you want me to start? <laughs> uh, uh, well, you, you were talking about Matt Bradley as kind of being an older brother figure yeah. for, the, for the last thing I yeah, saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I, he moved to time to go to college. He's a few years older than me. And, and he kind of was the one that like introduced me to like, um, like born against gravity records, that kind of thing. Um, that's cool. so very quickly was like into brown paper bag, seven inches music. <laughs> <laughs> that's a funny way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. a very vibrant sort of DIY scene, but do, would those bands come out on tour through Memphis and Knoxville? Yeah. Yeah. More, more Knoxville, I think. Me- well, no, Memphis was like kind of crustier, <laughs> I guess. So, like, we had his heroes gone, and that was kind of like, um, yeah. I mean, I, I think things kind of revolved around. They, they were like the band here. So, like, every, everything was kind of like, not, not like ripping them off, but just in a similar vein, I guess. Yeah, it's hard. We like so, um, big influential band in a scene, kind of puts a footprint yeah but i mean at the same time like it was, i mean like being getting to see them like a hundred times growing up was pretty amazing so, that's rad and yeah. then and then so you, so you moved to yeah. knoxville for college what were you studying in college what was that like um not I, man i loved living in knoxville actually um i kind of in a way wish that i'd lived there for longer um yeah i mean we were the four of us were the three, three of us were in art school and then um, uh, our drummer, Matt, was in architecture. So we were all in the same building every day. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's funny. Like, in a, in a way, we kind of play every day together. So even if it, you know, like, um, yeah, we were like the monkeys. We were just all, <laughs> <laughs> we were just all always together, kind of. That's amazing. What was so, that? There was um, that cool venue recently, or at least in the last like fifteen years in Knoxville. What was it called? It was like Pilot a Light. Bar. Pilot Light. Yeah. Pilot. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you guys played there? Yeah, a, a handful of times. It was great. They had the cool vin- vintage store yeah. next door, and I remember getting that feeling. I was like, "Wait, yeah. I think the vintage huh. store is owned by the same people as the venue because they had like yeah. nine yeah. volt batteries huh. for sale and like lighters and things. It's like they had their almost like tourist <laughs> supply. Yeah, like we know yeah. the band is going to finish sound yeah. checking and they're going to come over here, so we should sell them all the stuff that they're going to yeah. need on tour, like a pack of strings, a lighter, yeah. uh, you know, pack yeah. of cigarettes or whatever, and then some. I nine think volt I batteries. um I think. <laughs> I think I impulse bought a mood, uh, like a mood Opus Three from that store. <laughs> of course, yeah. It was like it was. It seemed like the most yeah. perfectly curated for musicians by musician <laughs> kind of store yeah, next to a venue. Exactly. I was like, this is genius. It's, it's the company store. Whatever the venue yeah. gives you for payment, you're just gonna go over there and spend it on cool clothes because you're on tour and you need a cool jacket because yeah. your jacket sucks, or your pants, or you need yeah. a new pair of boots or shoes. So you're just gonna pay all the money they give you. Yeah. You're just gonna give back to them and trade it for some. <laughs> Some vintage like <laughs> gear right. and uh, right. essentials. Yeah, 
Jeez. Yeah, I think I think that we ha- we haven't even like announced this yet, but yeah, it is genius. Um, I th- I think more than likely that's probably what will play our first show. Oh, cool. Um, the the record. Right? Oh, okay. So yeah. you're doing a full reunion? I didn't know if it was just the record. You're going all in. Live shows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's something that I'm kind of just like. Re- I I feel like I'm ex- I'm psyched about it still kind of like wrapping my head around it it's 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 really fun to kind of um inhabit that world again um but yeah we we um page 99 is having a festival in i think september and we in asked us to play so i I feel like we're going to do a handful of shows around uh that festival that's super cool um how fun. And yeah, then, it'll be it'll be <laughs> it'll be interesting to see if we can pull it off. <laughs> it's great. Um and then what and then just yeah. in terms of your chronology, so then when when you know Red Scare sort of runs its course, where where do you go next? What happens mm-hmm. after that? Um well I still am and I don't I don't know exactly. I I guess with this with the Red Scare, I'm not sure what I feel like this is kind of like dipping our toe in and just seeing what that feels like. But um, yeah, I always am working on uh, like stuff for Cloudland Canyon still. Oh yeah. Oh no, no. I Um, meant like chronology, like back into back in the day kind of thing, like still going through your story. (laughs) Yeah. I I didn't know how to answer that. So I was like, I was like, well, Randy, after this red scare thing runs out of runway. (laughs) That's not what I meant at all. No, I meant back, back. I don't know. I I think we have a slight delay on our, on our child graduates college. (laughs) Where's your, what's your 401k look like? Come on. Let's be honest about this. Where are you going? You know, what what are we thinking? Florida? Are we going to retire Florida? You're gonna go. Uh, where yeah, are you going? Texas? yeah, 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 yeah. Fort yeah. Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, Fort Lauderdale. Yep. Right. Um, gonna get really tan. <laughs> um, no, um, we the Red Scare. You know, it's funny to think about. I don't know if you have stuff like this with wives, but um, we so the Red Scare was only around for like three years, which is really kind of like the shortest band that I've like I've been in. Um, just like in, just because of circumstance, and I, I don't know. There was a lot of productivity for three years. I feel like you were even young. just. I was I was talking the other day about like how um, there were only like I think it was like two or three months between when we started in our first show, and that wow. just for some reason seems mind blowing. <laughs> too too dumb to know that you're not supposed to do it. You're supposed to yeah, wait exactly. more songs. Right? Like, we got five songs. Let's go fucking play show, guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I think they. I think they call that um, insouciance, which mm-hmm. I wish that I ha- I still had. I only I only know that because I think Brian Eno said it at some point. But um, <laughs> yeah, like the ig- the ignorance of youth. I love that. It sounds like innocence. A, that. It sounds like a shoegaze band play on innocence. <laughs> Shoesense. <laughs> hey, we're in shoesense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It does sound. Uh, yeah. Somebody will take it. <laughs> yeah. The very emo, uh, emo shoegaze band. <laughs> we're the innocence. What's yeah. Up? yeah. You would, you have to look at a bright Nina set. That's right. cool. <laughs> um so then okay so the band breaks people to pronounce it it's perfect yeah i love bands like that like yeah. First, um yeah so three years of productivity and then i imagine just being kids everybody kind of goes their own place and somebody realizes like oh i want to go do something else or i gotta get a job yeah so then that project ends so yeah like, I, what's the next thing you do um i don't know why i did i was dating a girl that wanted to move to new york right after we graduated mm-hmm. Um, that'll, that'll break up a band. Uh, who was also in art. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I mean, I, I think it was also like, I didn't really have a plan. Um, other, yeah. I had no idea what I was going to do when I got out of school. Probably. I, I think if I'd, yeah, I, I probably thought that I would move to California or something. Um, but yeah, just ended up that, that seemed like, yeah. So she wanted to go up there and then we had just finished the tour. Like we did a tour in 2000 that was like six weeks with, um, uh, Orchid and Lightning Bolt and, um, decided like the, 
yeah, Jay, Jay and Jeff from Orchid were moving to this place in Brooklyn, and it was literally like a month after we finished that tour. And I, I guess I had been like kind of kicking around whether I was girl that I was dating at the time. Um, and then just, yeah, just kind of jumped, uh, probably pretty impulsively. <laughs> That's it. That's so, great. That's part of the, in- the intrusence continues. You just like, oh, yeah, why don't I just yeah. live in New York? I don't know yeah. why. Not. Like, how hard could just, that be to live in New York? That's what you did, didn't it? <laughs> just go there the, and get, like get the, a basement apartment. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm like the it. Forrest Gump of hardcore. <laughs> oh, I want to see that. I want to see that as a film. That'd be a great one. Um, yeah. So yeah. What, So then, and then does that Panthers start around then? Or what is, what do you get into? I mean, what are you doing for work? Yeah. At this time? Are you doing yeah. art design, graphic design stuff? <laughs> you're going to, you're going to love this. So my first job in New York, Brett Rittinger, for some reason, loves to tell this story, um, was working for, okay, so I, I got a job as the director of publicity for BMG, like that major label. <laughs> what the only, f- straight out of college? Only, <laughs> yeah, like literally the only thing on my resume was like booking tours. Um, but yeah, like the vice president of the company was Lyle Pressler from Minor Threat. What? And I didn't so. Know that. Yeah, and so that was my final interview. Was going into Lyle's office, and I'm like looking at his like nameplate on his desk. And I'm like, I fucking know this guy. Who is this guy? And then I finally was like, Are you in Minor Threat? <laughs> and he's like, and You got the job. Like, Don't tell anybody. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, so I left. It like an hour later, he called me, and gave me the job. So I had like, no idea what I was doing. And what BMG was that? That was like the 10 records for a dollar place. No, BMG was like, what the fuck was yeah. BMG? No, it was. Right? You're right. Yeah. You're right. So at that time, the, it, it was that it, BMG and I think Columbia house. Um, oh, I, I don't know how those were related. I'm not sure if the man, I, did you do that as a kid? Oh yeah. Yeah. My mom, like the, the they, mail order they tried thing. to call and wanted like whatever. They're like $45 for the, the AC, what was it? The last action yeah. hero soundtrack, you know, with like the ace featuring one ace new ACDC <laughs> song. They wanted $45 for the CD. And my mom called and was like, fuck you. My kid's underage. He can't sign contracts. They're like, but he signed his name. She's like, yeah, he's fucking 12. Yeah. Fuck off. Like we're not paying yeah. you $45. Yeah. Like, and, she, and then she told me that she yelled at me, like, yeah. don't, ever, don't ever sign up for stuff again without asking us. I was like, sorry, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to bear in mind, like, when it probably was getting that, like, Phil Collins and Genesis cassettes from Columbia House when I was, like, eight or whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, everybody did it. It was a rite of passage because it, it sounded too good to be true. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. So, so you were doing for sure. publicity for but, um, them, and so what does that what does that even mean? I don't even know. Mm-hmm. So the um, two things. One is funny, like just like a roster of couple of the red bands that I don't <laughs> think most of the people that we know would be excited about. Um, yeah. So main, mainly mainly like tour press for those bands and also album press. But I, I would say that like day to day, just like calling like some paper in Altoona, Pennsylvania and get <laughs> tried to get them to write about one of the bands. So they were like a proper label that put out that put out like Mariah Carey sound of yeah. or something and did all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And also had this yeah, other yeah, yeah, yeah. side racket that financed the whole thing by ripping off kids from who wrote into the back the ads in the back of Rolling Stones. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty much. They were also the ones that were respond this is the this is the fun part. They were the ones that were like responsible for um those like totally eighties. Comps. Oh, now, now that's like, why so, I call music that style of thing. Yeah. 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 Kids, I think that, I think kids Bob was like their new thing at that time, but I would have to write also like the TV scripts for those like compilations. <laughs> Totally 80s. Remember when we used to drive yeah. in your Nissan Sentra or your, 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 whatever, Toyota Corolla yeah. and park under the, the yeah. bleachers and then we listen to 
people or De- Depeche Mode on what the Depeche Mode song was. I was kind of thinking about Depeche Mode song. Listen, yeah. I know you're, I know you're kidding, but it's almost verbatim no. uh, a script I that it. I wrote for a compilation that was called Going South. Whoa. So I'm sure you probably have a pretty good idea of what that is. <laughs> Did you ever get a blowjob in the back of your car as a teenager? Well, this is the music you're listening to. <laughs> really the going south. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it was more like, oh, more like, I remember sitting on the tailgate crushing tall boys. I ended up interviewing Lyle for, do you remember Skyscraper Magazine? Yeah, yeah. I, th- I did a long interview with Lyle for that thing. What was Lyle's whole take on the BMG thing? Like, what, what did he, he found himself in a position of making I think that, and I don't know this fully, but I think that the re, one of the reasons Minor Threat broke up was probably because of, um, so, like, at least a couple of them were interested in being more of like a professional entity. And so I, my point is like, I don't, I don't know that he ever really cared about, I, I think he was always more, um, professionally minded, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think totally. that that, I mean, it was always the story that like, they wanted to sound more like him <laughs> too or something. <laughs> Probably. He was, he was in a, he, after minor threat, he yeah. was in a band with Danzig briefly. Sam, was it Sam Hain? I think it was pre, maybe, I I could be totally making this up, but I think it was like pre Sam Hain and that, and then it played into Sam Hain. I think it also had, what is that guy? It's Minneapolis band. It's on the tip of my tongue. I think it was like one of the first releases on Touch and Go. It'll come to me. Oh, Tuska V. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll do a quick. It does. It's, oh, right. What? Um. It's, it's, yeah. So what, I'm trying to. Yeah. What band was he? <coughs> I can't remember. But what was the thing? What was the band? It's Sam Hain. It says Sam Hain was in. And then the Extorts. The, yeah. The Meat yeah, Man. Yeah, oh. Yeah. But that wasn't uh, the dude from the Meat Man was also in yeah. this like pre Sam Hain band with them. Wow crazy he's not even on here um so okay so you're doing that and then uh, how quickly then do you start playing music with people in new york do you find yourself in kind of a new sort of so space we there? yeah so we were playing yeah we started pandas pretty quickly so i i think i moved to new york in like september of 2000 something like that and we, I think we'd already decided that like jay jay and jeff Garlock and Jeff Salani and I were all going to do something new. Um, and then we, I guess Jay had met. Okay. So Jay was already doing, he lived in this like loft um, where they were in the, um, and I think through that he had met Justin from Panthers, um, Justin Cherno, who uh, was in Turing machine at the time. And I think either like Turing machine had like, yeah, like may, maybe they, I don't know. But anyway, he, yeah, he met him through like the vent, like his house slash venue that he was booking at the time. So I'm just going to jump in right here. Um, <laughs> the the internet was so was so shaky and so jumpy. I think we what we do is we end up turning our cameras off, and then just the audio worked a lot better from here. <clears throat> there was some um, ground covered about just early New York days. Jokes were made about um, you know the Strokes and and yeah yeahs and things like this. I, I don't know where we went. I, c- I couldn't understand half of what <laughs> of what was being said. I think we both were had like frozen frames for probably about five minutes until we just decided to turn our cameras off. But um, we pick back up the conversation with um, uh, <laughs> a, a rather uh, rude characterization of the er- early uh, New York, early aughts in New York days of the Panthers. And um, 
and then now everything runs a little bit smoother because we have our cameras off and we're not looking at each other's um, Max Headroom-like visages on the screen. So, yeah, you were barnacle on Julian Casablanca's uh, <laughs> ass it. in New York <laughs> in the early 2000s. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Um, but, th- but, and then that's when we've, that's when we first met. We played in, and um, we opened for you guys in San Diego at a weird, like, teen yeah. center, like youth I was rec thinking center. About that. Do you remember yeah, the yeah, show? Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought you guys were so <laughs> awesome. But I, rem- I remember <laughs> specifically when, um, okay, so I think we might have played first because I, I specifically remember, like, I met you really fast. Oh. I thought you guys were headlining. No, yeah, I think oh. I, I think so, but I think it was at a different location. I think we played a couple shows together, and I think the first one of them, I, I could be I could be wrong, but oh, okay, okay. I don't know. It might have been like Galita, or or somewhere like kind of like up the coast a little bit. Oh, um, was that with the moving units thing? Right? Is possibly, that we were doing all possibly, those? possibly. I but I just okay. remember I yes. met. I, I think like I was kind of in charge of like asking bands to play with us on tour. And um, I <laughs> yeah. think I found out about you guys through like Sam from Bluebird or something like that. Um, that sounds right. Yeah. He was helping. He put out that first full length record. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then Brian, and then, and then Rodinger, you know, Dean was friends with Rodinger from like um, CalArts days, and, Okay, you know, like Angus and uh, oh, I didn't know that did you know, Dean guys. go to CalArts. So Dean just, he did a summer program between his like freshman or between his like uh, senior year of high school and like freshman year of college, which I, he didn't okay. really go to college, but, but that kind of that summer yeah, in between yeah, yeah. he had, there was like a sleepover, like arts thing. And Angus, Andrew from Liars was his uh, like camp counselor, or like a resident advisor or whatever, like told everybody to shut the fuck up oh, in okay. the dorms. And he's this, you know, giant so Australian funny. person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so fun. It's so funny to like connect these dots just because like, um, yeah, I mean, I met Aaron from liars through, it's funny. Cause I mean, I would have, I guess met Aaron anyway through music, like just through playing with liars and Panthers. Yeah. Um, but I, I met Aaron through Rodinger. So okay. yeah, that's yeah. super funny. I didn't, I didn't make that. I didn't know that, that you guys went that far back. Yeah, and so and then Dean met had like new Brian Rodinger from like those Cal Arts days too, and they kind of kept in yeah. touch. And, you know, then Brian was in This Machine Kills with like Steve Aoki, yeah. and Dean would go see those shows because Dean was from up there. Right. And uh, okay, from and so, like yeah, Valencia, he, exactly. Yeah, he grew up there. The yeah, yeah, teens. yeah. He uh, so yeah. So then I kind of just met those people through proxy by being in a band then with Dean. And I mean, honestly, I mean, I I was very suburban. I grew up out towards closer towards the desert you know, from, yeah, uh, okay. from in the LA zone. And so I was in a very kind of like mini mall, like not, like not that Valencia was so cool, but I guess Cal arts was something, you know, <laughs> there was some kind of cultural, yeah. uh, um, uh, frisson happening there. So I, I feel like meeting Dean, it was like, Oh, there's this whole other thing. Like I had older brothers. So I kind of was exposed to some parts of LA's underground music scene, but, but prior, like a one generation before, like what would be the PCH club and, you know, um, right. all the stuff from, right, right, from right. gravity and, and all that stuff. Like I, I was, I was already in like older bands. And so I think when the, all the yeah. sort of stuff of that thing, I was like, I don't know, man. I mean, like, do you guys know Jabberjaw? I was like, think I was talking about stuff like yeah. that. And they were like, no, yeah, no, there's yeah, this whole yeah. other kind of more youthful thing over here. I'm like, oh, okay. So I had to kind of, so was, was like, the, um, was the PCH a big thing? It, it was, did you guys play there? We, okay, so we, d- yeah, yeah, yeah. We, well, I guess big, um, big in the scene, I guess, kind of thing, right? Like scene points. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I knew about the smell, obviously, and we played, we played at the smell, I think, on our first, like, the first time we were in California. I think we, Road Jared set it up, so we played with Volume 11. Oh, cool. Um, and then same thing, Volume 11, Orchid, and actually this band, Heart of Snow. I don't know if you remember no. them or not, but um, the, he did like, um, like a sound, but there was like a handheld heart sound virus, like kind of show fest thing at PCH. That okay. I think was our last show in LA. Crazy. Yeah. 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 So all, I, I so remember all just that venue was crossing cool. all those paths. So then, okay. So yeah. Panthers, so we, we must've done that moving units tour together. Cause I think we were opening for okay. them because Dean used to work at Aaron's records with, um, Oh my God. Drummer man, yeah, drummer yeah. man from Moving Units. That's, why am I why am I spacing on his name? Uh, I see his face. I see his hair. 
Okay. Was that the guy in Festival of Dead Deer? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Aaron's Records is so fun. I like, I specifically, yeah, we would always go there with Chris. Them. Chris, uh, I don't know. I'll figure okay. it out. Yeah. 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 But yeah. We, I remember that. What part of town was that? Was that right? That was right in Hollywood. Okay. Well, yeah. He the, would like, always take us there. I think I bought my <laughs> it was first cool. It was before Captain Amoeba. Beefheart record there. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Chris Hathwell. That's why. Yeah. That was, there we go. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Funny. Yeah, I just, for some reason, I always, like, I have, like, really good memories of going to that record store. It was the cool, um, it was the shit. It was, I think it was, like, the basis for that movie Empire Records. You know, all the cool young oh. people working at the record store. <laughs> I think that's kind of what, like, Aaron's that's Records really was. It was, like, the cool hip thing. And Dean was, like, I don't know, whatever, 18, 19 years old and got a job there. Yeah, it's so, it's funny. Like, did your parents, so you were involved in music really, really early. Like how, I got, when, when did you start? I got my yeah. first guitar at like 12 and then got like a four, okay. got a four track at like 14. And so I was like, okay. I was fully Nirvana pilled. I went from listening to like do the Bartman and Adam's family Value <laughs> soundtrack and see hammer, you know, stuff to then like, yeah. Oh, never mind. came out. There's a Nirvana. Yeah. thing. Okay. Now I need flannels and doc Martens and ripped jeans. I'm going to wear my dad's old like yeah. ripped jeans and stuff. And then from yeah. there, like skateboarding, hit pretty hard and was into like toy machine and like, you know, whatever, um, you know, kind of cool, weird art, um, stuff like that. And Sonic thin and Sonic youth and, you know, kind of go down the alternative nineties rabbit hole of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking like, it's so crazy that our kids are almost that age now. And oh, like, I, know. I think my parents probably thought I was crazy. Like booking, <laughs> show, you know, like being that age and like, you know, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go book a show and whatever. I would be so psyched if my kid had that. Like, if he has that initiative, if he gets oh to be God. that age, I'd be so like impressed. Well, now it's but now it's going to be something different, right? Because that's the thing is like we'll never understand the 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 energy is the same, but the content or the context of it is will always be so different. Like now, like your son yeah. will organize like the coolest Fortnite like meetup and like, battle <laughs> yeah. royale thing, and like Dad, I totally like won the thing, and I had like you know Blue Forty Two was there on my team, and it was like, and you're like. I don't get it, son. I don't understand what yeah. you're doing. Like, it yeah. just sounds like you played, you played a uh, Atari with your friends. Like, no, yeah. this was, this was important. It's a movement. Like, yeah. I don't know. I don't I, know. I struggle it. with that piece because like the, the Fortnite roadblock, because well, a, it kind of seems constructive. Like, I, I mean, I don't want to spend a ton of time on it, but also <laughs> it's the way that they, so, that's how they socialize. Like I, it's yeah, hard to argue exactly. with like when every other kid in his class is on and they're all like, what you know, trying to murder each other with automatic <laughs> weapons. If they're they're dressed as a as a banana with a flamethrower, <laughs> yeah. and they're yelling about how they just killed, they just decapitated their other friend. Yeah, yeah. He's always yeah. He'll be like, "Can I have V bucks to buy a skin?" And I'm like, "What? Yep. Why?" <laughs> it's a virtual he, yeah, economy. He's like they, <laughs> yeah, they have a Dua Lipa skin. I obviously I need that obviously everyone so, needs that. Yep. Those are important things. It's, yeah. it's, yeah, I think I, I've, I've come to that point now of the, like, I understand that this is what their, their generation's social life and rebellion and expression. It's going to, it's going to happen. It's going to look different. I never knew, you know, I remember when we first had him, like what weird thing are they going to get into? Like my wife and I think of our fancy ourselves as fairly liberal, open-minded people and, you know, yeah. pre pretty permissive in whatever ways we grew up. And then of course it's like, wait, you want to dress like, you know, you want to play video games and, and like yeah. no like how'd you find the one thing yeah. that would piss us off like of course that's how it happens yeah. like can't you go outside and like i don't know yeah. get a girl pregnant or something like no i want to stay inside like oh bro why aren't you smoking weed in the park and like getting rides from people that are older than you and going to like you know violent concerts or something where you could get punched in the face like no i, want to, I just want to be online it's yeah cool. like oh no you yeah know. yeah <laughs> it's confusing. It's good. And it's hard to get a handle on like the, yeah, it's like, it's, it's hard to get a, like a, like a bird's eye view of that world. Like, I feel like I need someone to translate it for me or something. Yeah. Yeah. But, I think you just yeah. try to keep those lines of communication open. Like, cool. What is that? Tell me, tell me about it. Like, what do you got? Yeah. Okay. Let me play with you. Yeah, that's, what we, my, that's what we've been trying to do. I mean, ours is only, our guy's only 10. So he's still, yeah. Down I mean, I think that, like, I think the whole thing is just being 
or I mean, I don't know. I don't know if this is good or bad, but I, from some, I, I had like my intention set from the beginning that it was like just transparency, being fully mm-hmm. honest with them as, as often as is obviously like some stuff, you know, when I yeah. Them. But yeah, I think just like leveling with them and giving. Did I lose you again? Oh, no, I'm back. Okay, you're there. Yeah, sorry. Okay, okay, good. But yeah, being honest with your kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah I know. But, but um, okay, so let's get back. So Panthers are, are the yeah. new sensation in New York. I remember you guys were very hip <laughs> and very cool and obviously, <laughs> you know, wore right. cool jackets and things. Nice. And, I'll take uh, it, Randy. And yeah, but I mean, because then I think we were a little, I think the wives at that point was a little grungier and I think we were trying to be like black dice or something. Sure, to, sure, yeah. sure, sure. We weren't as hip, yeah. but we, but the, but hip was the coin of the kingdom. It was kind of, you know, it was, all, it was all disco and you know, cool I stuff. Think, and I honestly tried. feel like, I feel like Black Dice was the hippest thing. Like I, I, Real, that's I, what I, I thought too. I, but everybody else yeah, looked like yeah, they yeah. were hipper than than that. But I thought Black Dice, yeah, exactly. Still think that. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I mean, Black Dice to this day remains unfuckwithable for sure. <laughs> but. um but yeah, I know I know what you mean. I feel like I feel like on our end there there might have been some I don't I don't know how to say this without it sounding shitty, but like some some type of reaction to like the world of hardcore that we had all kind of gone through like the past uh, few years like in a really intense way. That makes sense. Um you know, I don't I don't really mean like um I don't, maybe not music. I don't really know. I, I was kind of actually like thinking about this earlier. Like, um, it was, a. I feel like it was a rejection of something. I'm just not really sure exactly what, or how to put my <laughs> finger on it. That sums so. up being in your twenties perfectly. We were rejecting yeah. something. <laughs> The, well, what were you rejecting? We went from yeah. we went from insouciance to rejection. <laughs> to well, that's and that's I think that's a very um, you could very logical uh, pendulum swing, right? To be too too dumb to not do to not know why you shouldn't do things like running headfirst into a brick wall all the time, and then you know the the rea- the thing that happens after that, you do that enough times, like I think I'm just not against that. I think I'm just not going to do that. Yeah. Soon. I want to be a little bit more aloof and maybe not so not yeah. even hard on my sleeve kind of uh, earnestness yeah. so i think we've got to kind of pull back and be a little bit more mysterious maybe that's the way to go sure it's better you know yeah 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 May- maybe and then probably probably yeah i think and, and then there's like also you know hearing hearing can for the first time or like kind of getting into other music and yeah. kind of maybe taking that on like oh this is my like this is what i like now or, you know, I mean, like in your, your 20s, like music kind of like defines the type of person you are in a lot of ways. <laughs> if if that's the type, you know, if you're into music. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you heard this. You probably didn't hear this interview. With, uh, Thurston Moore was interviewed on uh, Mark Maron's podcast. And uh, oh, I, yeah, I did. I oh, did. And, yeah. And Thurston he had this great line. It was like hardcore is fun because it so had so much energy. And then once the hardcore kids started having sex, then it like turned into like prog rock. We're like, <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Let me let me just yeah. Let me just graft that statement onto what I just said because I feel like I, I couldn't ever I could never say it that well. But yeah, that <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's why that's, Thurston Moore is Thurston Moore, right? Yeah, he's he's been doing this a long time. Yeah, he has it figured out. Yeah, I need it. Like I need him to like on like dial a friend kind of uh, <laughs> like what was that show? <laughs> Where you yeah, could, you who could, wants to be a millionaire? Yeah. Like, hold on, Thursday. I need to. Yeah, I need, right, a, I need right. a, a succinct description of my uh, of my twenties. He's like, oh yeah, okay. I got gotcha. you, <laughs> got gotcha on this one. Right, I can do this. Yeah. By the way, so I don't know if it was moving units or what, but I specifically remember. I think I had communicated with you about playing shows, and then when you and I met, I I remember about ten minutes later we were drinking beer in the Panthers van. Yes, which was a common occurrence back then. Yeah, that's that's probably why I don't remember a lot of it either. I was very much the uh, the beer drinker of the band at the time. Okay, I've been sober yeah. now for fourteen years, <laughs> but I spent a lot of my twenties. Oh, that's awesome! V- very not sober. Yeah, and so there was yeah. yeah. But it's fun. It's rare that I would have been contacted because I think Dean was always like the hyper 
vigilant one, or also just very social. He, Interesting. He knew, that, he knew he was very charismatic and social, knew how to book yeah, things, yeah. or just was unafraid to do that. And I think I was not that person. And uh, okay. and so for what, however we got in contact, I must have been like, hey, this is mine. I figured this shit out. This is my fucking thing. Like I, I know a band. <laughs> what about this band? Like, okay. I don't know. So I could see me being very, uh, very, um, you know, self conscious or, or you know, new, naive to all of that stuff, or like you know, self, you know, too precious about this. Like, yeah, let's fucking play with these guys. Right. So, like. Yeah, because they wrote me and they said they wanted to play. So yeah, that's we got to do this. That's <laughs> yeah, cool. It's, yeah, you know, it's it sounds right. One one thing that's fun, I've been realizing lately that's fun about getting older is being less precious. Oh my god, it's the best, right? Yeah, 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 and it's almost like necessary, but it also, yeah, it feels it feels good to kind of let go of that. Or well, yeah, well, your well, your twenties. I think you know you don't know who you are, and you don't know who your friends are. You don't know anything, so it's better just kind of, just kind of have to keep everything pretty, like keep it you know, under your vest or under your hat. Like I don't want to say anything to piss anyone off. I don't know if this is right or that's yeah. right. And then uh, you know, with as you start, as you start, to, you know, you find yourself in the world and your place, and you kind of know what what you're, what what you're about. It helps kind of build yeah. confidence. But I think, but I think we all faked the confidence pretty well, you know, getting up on stage every night yeah. and playing music. Like there was, there was a semblance of it, but I think if we were being honest with ourselves, we we're probably shitting our pants every night getting on stage. Uh, yeah. 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 I mean, I think with the red scare, like I, I feel like to get up there and scream, I'd have to go into like almost like a near blackout. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I really, well, that, the, again, again, see, see the footnote beer, you know, from the previous <laughs> statement there ergo yeah. uh you know excessive amounts of alcohol would, would allow that type of fugue state where you could perform sure it is more of a fugue it is it is yeah. a, it's a walter white era or level <laughs> fugue state um yeah. yeah so but yeah i i think because of that i there's not too much about those shows that i remember the actual playing part do you do yeah. you have that where you kind of like you remember details oh. about the show but the actual playing kind of Sometimes, like a blur of it. you know, yeah. it's usually the stuff that goes wrong. You remember like anything that went right. I probably, have oh, forgotten. Yeah. but all the, but all yeah, of the yeah, mistakes, yeah. all of the petty bickering and bullshit and fights and, uh, between, between the yeah. band, not between the audience, but all those little weird little moments. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I remember those, but, um, but no, so yeah. I, so now that I, this sounds right. So I think, I think Dean booked like a West coast run with moving units. And I think the first one okay. was at like a, a Christian, center and it became very dean sort of like let's let's all do this together and i think blake or whatever was just following dean's lead because again dean seemed yeah. very confident and knew what he was doing so um so i think yeah so we must have so it must have been the three band bill of of panthers wives and moving units that sounds at right. this, like weird all ages spaces go, kind of going up and down the coast i think the furthest we went up was like san francisco we like opened for them in a okay. basement the cafe du nord i don't know if you guys were on that one too I don't think so. I, I think we played another like Stockton I'm, or Bakersfield or something or Sacramento. Yeah. Or something like that. I, yeah. 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 I think, yeah, so it must've only been, I don't remember playing with you guys in LA, but I do remember playing the ones mm. like on the central coast and San Diego for some reason. Yeah. That sounds we right. Were, and then there I was like a Santa Barbara or Santa Cruz. No, but probably not Santa Barbara because we, we did go lead up. Maybe there's a Santa Cruz one too. It was like a, like a dance okay. studio or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's what I'm talking about, maybe. Like, I feel like it was, it, it seemed, yeah, like some type of weird studio. Okay. Then, yeah, there like, you go. Uh, so maybe not the church parking lot. I remember drinking beers with somebody in the van at a church parking lot because it was like very all ages and very not like, yeah. you know. So we had, so yeah. I remember like drinking in the van <laughs> and then going in yeah. and playing this like kids sort of rumpus room area in a church in Columbia. Right. Right. Yeah. And I always feel you always feel like you're kind of doing something nefarious when you're doing that. Oh yeah. I was I, I was I was up for all that. of that stuff though, because it was that was just part of the fun of it. Like, oh I don't know, I was gonna go drink alcohol in my car and then <laughs> I'll come back in <laughs> yeah. and play to uh teenagers. You know. What did I know? I mean I was only yeah. twenty two probably at the time, probably only barely legal to drink. Yeah. I mean I feel like I was young, which makes you like yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like yeah, I'm I'm probably a few years older than you. Right. Yeah. I, but, I was um, born in 81. But okay. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, 77. So then, okay. So then Panthers, I mean, then Jeff Cellini, I remember the drummer, we played, Wise played in South by Southwest, but our dickhead drummer had to like fly home early. And so we asked Jeff oh, if he could fill yeah. in for like, we had to play, we played the Fader Fort 
or something or some okay. other like, yeah, yeah. like skateboard bowl or BMX bowl or something. We played like two shows and we asked Jeff if yeah. he could fill in. And he did. I totally it, remember it, that. It was a kind yeah. of a, a mess and a wreck, but he was nice enough to do that. And uh, yeah, we, we, we yeah. eventually um, removed that drummer from the band and got a different drummer and then ended that band. Yeah, I, re- I, I remember, I think, most, most of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so then, then what happens with Panthers? Where, where, does, where does that go south? Um, I, I, I don't know if it, like, really, I mean, I didn't really go south. It was more like, mm-hmm. so, okay, so I, I don't know. I guess it was like, so we, we were active like from like 2000 to 2006. And then I had started doing, well, both you and I had started new bands. Uh, I was doing, I started doing Cloudland Canyon. Okay. Um, and then right after, I think we, we had just done like that West coast tour with Lycans and with uh, you guys, a few or with right. When that was an epic show. I remember that it was July 4th, like the basement of the art yeah. gallery. Again, something I set up. It was like the, one of the handful of shows yeah. I normally did not set up shows, but I did uh, yeah. set that one up. Yeah. That was badass. Yeah. That was like, so it was like, you got no age Cloudland, Jim from the smell. I remember had set up in like one corner. Of oh no, that was Jim Brown from Bluebird. That was a different gym. Oh, it was. Yeah. That was Jim Brown. from okay. That was, um, Halloy's. Cause he knew the lady who knew the, who had the art, who had the, the art gallery. That's so I interesting. I always thought that was Jim from the small. Um, no. Okay. And then you, we like Cloudland, no age and high places played downstairs. Yeah, that's right. And Likens is Rob Lowe from 90 day men. And then yeah, Rob Lowe right, right, right. As, a, as a great composer in the soundtrack of the new candy man. Yeah. And he, yeah. yeah, so he was playing in Cloudland and then, sorry, I'm just kind of like re-remembering this. And then he played as Lycans, um, like we kind of segued into Lycans. Oh, like I think okay. Oh, but Simon, he, he played Simon with and Cla- I would leave. Yeah. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so we went, went on that tour. We met him in Chicago. Simon and I had already had like a set worked out. Rob, like... <laughs> Um, like contributed to that. And then we, so when the whole tour was, we weren't playing stuff from like our album. We were just ba- doing something completely new with Rob. And then we recorded it eventually. And that came out as like Cloudland Canyon Lycans. Cool. So, yeah. Damn. Um, but yeah, so going back to Panthers. Sorry to sidetrack so much. Uh, no, no. Yeah, I came back from that tour, and I think we were we had written a full album, which ended up being like the last um, Panthers record. And um, I don't I don't know. I guess I just may, maybe I was like either not seeming like super interested in it. Um, we were about to go record in New Jersey um, at Water Music, and I think like the week before um, Jeff. Garlic called and was like, "Hey, hey, do you do you want to do this anymore?" <laughs> and I think that was just like a and and like very quickly I was like, "No, I'm, I I think we we're just both okay with me not doing it anymore." So um, I think I both. I mean, I got I didn't quit, so I guess technically I was kicked out of the band. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, whatever I, it's, it's funny. Cause we, when we talk about that now, it's, it's like when Kip quit or was kicked out and I don't, <laughs> it seems like nobody really knows. Um, Either way. But, right. It doesn't matter. Um, it was not, uh, it was a very amicable conversation. Uh, I do remember that. Um, Jeff and I also worked together at that time. So, okay. So yeah, um, you were able to be slightly anyway, mature about it. And then re, re, were you not on that last record? No, I didn't was, play on it. Um, okay. I'm trying to think how that worked. So just to quit or yeah, I don't, I don't know if it was how that unfolded, but um, so it, it, at a certain, Oh, right. Sorry. I, it's fun. It's fun to think about this stuff just cause I haven't thought about it in so long. And then I think Jeff Delaney quit. So okay, 
So yeah, and, he had like a cool publishing that. job. He was like doing like kids books and stuff. He had a whole thing. Yeah, still, still is, still is. Um, Garlock also has written a series of children's book called like Pop Detective or something. Like that. Oh, amazing. Um, yeah, it's a, like that's such a cool thing to be doing when you have little kids. Um, but yeah, so I don't, I don't know the timeline on this, but at some point after the record was recorded, um, it ended up just being uh, Jay and Garlock. And um, so, yeah. And then they went, they went on tour. They, okay. So the drummer, Joe Stickney from Baron Heaven. I don't know if you know him or not. No. Um, he ended up becoming the drummer and then Josh Anzano from, who's been in like a, you, you probably know. Um, he's, Josh is actually, Gonna, he's the one that's going to play second guitar in the Red Scare for like our okay. upcoming shows. Um, he um, he was just he was the new guitar player, and I I think they only I think it was just guitar based drums singing. Um, and I think I think that the intention of reconfiguring the lineup like that after the record came out was they were offered like a I think a tour with Big Business and High on Fire. Oh wow! So I think I think they ended up just doing that tour, and I think it kind of fizzled out after that. Yeah, as things do, it's so hard. I think at that age too, where like things are just you know, shit's just moving. You're breaking up with people. You're like, I'm 25. Like, why did we break up? I don't know. I'm 25. <laughs> I want to date somebody else. Yeah. Like, are you want to date yeah. somebody else? Or I don't know. Like, why did the band break? You know, some of sometimes there's very like you know no, notable or very valid reasons for projects to end, and sometimes it's just like. I don't know. I wasn't into it. I got tired of yeah. bullshit or, you know, you can, I, 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 I find it. I try not to be cynical as much as I can, as much yeah. as it, it, it comes to me so easily. Um, but I'll, I'll look at a band, <laughs> you know, sometimes I'll see a younger band play and I go, Oh, I get it. I see, I, I can see what their next five years is going to be like, you know, with right. success, they could probably get to about seven years, but with, you know, sure. <laughs> with, if things go really bad, maybe they got about two years in there. But, um, but yeah. you know, it's like that, this kid's really was going to do this. That kid's he, he's, he's, he's going to be a great, um, you know, computer programmer he has no you know sure. social skills he can't do anything and that, you know that's usually you know bass player and then the drummer yeah. is you know what i mean gonna do something else dumb he's gonna go but join his dad's construction team or something you could usually sure. you could start to sure. you just, you just see it go because you just know how how, how, it, how often it happens and what the stories are like you know the singer's yeah. gonna get too big for his britches and want to like do something stupid and then everyone's gonna turn on him and then he's gonna have to figure out a new, another band and you know and then nobody else will know what to do they'll never have they'll never know how yeah. good they had it at this point is as, as abusive yeah. and as like um you know toxic as those environments are it's like this is probably the best this is the, the you're, these are the, this is the best time you'll have had in your yeah. life yeah for sure did you ever feel like I, I was gonna bring this up earlier but like with the red scare it's so after we had done two records I think like at that, did you feel like at the time, like bands weren't really supposed to, like, especially like hardcore bands, like weren't supposed to last that long, really. Like I, you know, yeah, if you did it was more better than one to, LP, you're kind of becoming a dinosaur or, was, or I, I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think it was very, yeah, it was very common to kind of just be like, Oh yeah, this is, or it felt satisfied. Like you, the premise had, had completed itself. It had like served its purpose. Like, yeah, we started a band. We released a seven inch. That's it. Yeah, it, it wasn't. It was almost absurd to think you were going to do a full length. Like maybe do two seven inches. Yeah. Like, Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Prolific. Yeah. Take it easy. Yeah. Full time. Um, yeah. Do you? <laughs> do you? Did you? Yeah. Uh, did you feel like you feel like that is because like just that's kind of like the posture that's valued in that like type of in that type of scene, or do you feel like it's more like know. the music just kind of runs out of road? I don't know. It's a good question, right? Because I mean, the the shtick could get could get annoying if you kept going. You know what I mean? Like, or the or it's everybody could agree to do one thing for a short period of time, but if it goes longer, that I think that's more more right. likely what it was is that just the those amount of personalities getting a second mm -hmm. act, you know, then it takes commitment yeah. and it takes some vision or it takes leadership. Well, you know, nine times out of 10, yeah. none of those things are there. You, you know, there's the, yeah. everybody wants, I would think if, if, if kids were honest, 
you know, or if you're able, if you were able to be honest as a child, I just got to say myself, you know, any band from like 16 to 24, everyone's probably in a different band. Everybody, you know, like you're in a band and the, uh-huh. the drummer thinks he's in helmet. The guitar player thinks he's in the Rolling Stones. <laughs> you know what I mean? The guitar player thinks he's in or whatever. Right. You know what I mean? Everybody's, everybody thinks they're in a different band. They don't know it at the time. Cause it was the only like yeah. ch- four, four chumps that would show up in the room for practice all the time. So they have to put up with it. Yeah. But one guy wants to be yeah. raging against the machine when hates it, when the guy does the solo and the other guy hates it when this guy does that. And you know, but you can uh-huh. get a couple shows under your belt and you could maybe record something. And then it's, and then everyone's yeah, that's go funny. I mean, one too many solos or one yeah. too many screens or you don't fucking do that thing. And it's the band's over. <laughs> yeah. I feel like that. Yeah, I struggled with that a little bit with Panthers just because almost like kind of the nature of the band was that we were all just into such like wildly different things. Um, And I mean, there's like some value in that. But I was just thinking like, you know, coming from the Red Scare where I felt like we were all very much on the same page, like we definitely had the same objective um, for the most part. It, what I mean, that feels really good, right? Like you really yeah. like when you're in like the camaraderie that kind of comes with like all like going for this like minded people. They've been yeah. rowing the boat in the same direction. Yeah. But I guess the, so the, I, the, the, yeah. yeah, it was a different world then too, because it was, you know, it wasn't clear that you could just put your music up online. Obviously that didn't exist, but like getting a record deal or like how famous could we be? Like I could just play in this dumb band and maybe, you know, cause you ever, you saw like the strokes or like we said, you know, I mean that New York scene, especially at that time, it sort of was, yeah. you know, it was there was a romantic sort of side of it. Like, I don't know, let's just, let's yeah. just keep playing shows until we're on a major label. <laughs> and then yeah. and then fast forward three years like oh i guess we're not on a major label okay then yeah I gotta well i mean else. that's pretty much that's pretty much what we did with panthers and i mean that i that was such a i think like in addition to kind of not not exactly fitting in to a lot of what was going on clay like it was also like just like a crazy like because we did sign to a major label and um I, it was such a crazy process of like deciding what you're okay with and what you're not. Cause I mean, I, <laughs> like the values that come from like DIY hardcore, I feel like I'm, you know, still to this day, like, I feel like it's such a, like, just even like the, I don't know, like the, the ethos that kind of permeates your entire life when you have those experiences. Um, Give it like given that it it was difficult for us to like figure out like okay are we are we okay having like sparks like the alcoholic energy <laughs> drink sponsor yeah. our tour or like whatever it is uh, yeah. yeah I mean I'm sure God I can't I can't even imagine I'm sure Noah had a lot of opportunities that you guys were were um, <laughs> we said no to stuff we said yes. About. We said, yeah, yeah. We said yes to more. I think we took it on a case by case basis. We, always, we tried not to have a hard and fast rule. Like we just apply it across everything across the board. But again, you yeah. know, everybody's, I mean, everyone's and it, it, those are personal lines. Like, oh, I do not cross this line or, you know, I don't care what it is. Like, fuck yeah, we're going to get paid. It's, it's, yeah. it's a hard, it's the, all of those discussions are hard because there's no real right answer. Right. You know what I mean? It's just sure. whatever you, whatever you want to do. And, and yeah. the, the, even the, the importance of how big that seems like, you know what I mean? Like, Oh my God, Sparks sponsored the tour. Like the truth is at the end of the day, nobody fucking remembers it. No one knows it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you may know it yeah. at the time, but, um, but you know, it's well, like, especially now. Yeah. Like, cause I mean, yeah, it's those types of considerate. Like, I feel like if you, if you even ban, you know, what the new crop of like, hardcore that's taking place now um i i bet you well i mean i don't want to assume anything but i mean i feel like some of those kids would probably have a hard time understanding what how um looked down on um almost like getting paid was back then oh god right yeah i mean but just think about that like how detrimental that is to your own survival of, of any organization of anything any project and yeah. if like getting paid getting monetarily compensated for your effort all your hard work and time and effort it was seen as a conflicting yeah. thing like it's doomed from the start because it's the one it's like you know like yeah i'm really into sports but i don't think i can drink water like you know i really want to be a long distance runner but you know drinking water is stupid 
And you're like, well, yeah. you're not going to get very far. And that's just the shame of it all. And, but again, but I think it's all about what, what are the goals of the thing? If the band is just, you know, especially if you don't need money, if you come from an affluent background and you live with your parents or whatever, or you have another job and this is your side hobby, it's, you know, then it's, then that's just that. And then and that's cool. And you can definitely get away with yeah. making rad art and not having to expect putting any kind of monetary pressure on it to pay the bills. But yeah, um, for sure. But you know, for it's, sure. it's, but in your twenties, that's a different, it's a different story, you know? And I think there's a lot of those kind of things. That's why those high school bands sort of work so well. I like you getting back to that. Like maybe one of the reasons yeah. why those high school bands work is because one, there's no money. Cause no one gives a shit. Really. There's no one's going to pay you anyway. So you don't even have to have those conversations. And two, you don't, you don't really need any money because your parents buy all the groceries. Then you sleep at their house. Right. So, <laughs> right. Right. You know, yeah, so there, it could be the most, probably the most purely artistic thing you'd ever do in your life was under those conditions. Yeah. What was the, like, I'm asking you this and I think I know the craziest thing for me, but what was the, <laughs> what was the, what was the craziest thing you guys got asked to do? Like, as far as like, just, you were like, oh. uh, just mind blown with what was occurring. God damn. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there was something to do with, it's hard to know if it was crazy or not. Cause it was like, well, it's, you know, we like, ditched out before it happened. There was something about like comic con and like cart and okay. comic, <laughs> cartoon network or something. There's something with that. And it okay. just seemed a little too like a bridge too far. Like, wait, how, how deep are we going to get pulled into some weirdness? I remember not doing that. That's um, I yeah. don't know. I mean, honestly, we did a lot of weird shit too. You know what I mean? I think, you know, playing yeah. on David Letterman was probably the craziest thing, you know, that ever happened oh, in my life. Right. But, but then, but that's the important thing with the that, answer. but the important thing with that, the two is, you know, to us, you know, to, to dads at a playground, yeah. maybe that means something. But the reality is, yeah. you know, I could say I played on David Letterman and, you know, I'm, I'm on the older side of being a dad, you know what I mean? Most of the kids, you know, especially with the four-year-olds, you know, and so like, you yeah. know, I'm talking to, I'm talking to other parents who are in their like late twenties or early thirties. And, uh, yeah. and I see David Letterman and they've never heard of that guy. You mean the guy with the Santa Claus beard and all that <laughs> stuff? And I'm just like, yeah, it was a long time ago. It doesn't matter. It's that not, is mind blowing. Important. I cannot believe that. I, that's so crazy to me. So, I mean, my reflection now, the hindsight in 2020 of it all is that the, the biggest accomplishments and the biggest failures really shrink with time. Yeah. And, and so, and those are yeah. and it's oh, a good God. thing and a yeah. bad thing. So you have to be comfortable Absolutely. with that. You can't really use those accomplishments or as like to prop up your entire identity and ego for, for gener for decades to come. Cause really, you know, no one's going to give a shit in the same way. Like, Oh yeah, we That's really true. fucked up. We like, we played this fucking mountain do like whatever, like, um, Holy <laughs> yeah. alley or something, you know, something really stupid. Right, right, right. Like, um, you know, again, I no one's going to fucking remember that. Like, oh, okay. Whatever. Yeah. No one cares. I, I was thinking mine would be the, uh, just in pure, like what the fuck mess. Yeah. Um, I think we, I think Panthers and Stevie Oki played at the, uh, the Aladdin casino in Vegas. Oh, yeah. And I, yeah, I was just, um, one of the strangest things that I've ever had to do. Oh my God. Well, right. Unless they had to do, I mean, it was fun, but sure. But yeah, I mean, you weren't throwing so sheet weird. cakes at kids faces and jumping on them with uh, rafts, right? At that that point, might've like, been pre sheet cake. I'm not sure. He has, he has gone on to become so much weirder than anything he was back then. I mean, he's really like transformed yeah. this like insane, like, um, well, I don't know, cultural like figure. Yeah, it, it really is. I, I, when I saw Jesse Pinkman on Breaking Bad, this is my second Breaking uh -huh. Bad reference here, wearing a Steve Aoki shirt, I was like, okay, he's uh, no, the world's he's the world has collided. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. definitely weird. No, it's, it's a weird one. But again, but look at the background. You know, the dad was larger than life, the whole family. You know what I mean? It was like, it's, it's not absurd when you look again in That's hindsight. True. It all makes sense. That's true. You know what I mean? Like the story, the story can always get weirder. <laughs> like, is this, yeah. can this story get any weirder? Like, yeah, Oh yeah. yeah, it certainly can. And, and I, for some, for some sad reason, I feel like this, the Steve Aoki story is not as weird as it's going to get for the rest of his life. Probably, <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably. Did you, did you guys, it. were, were you, um, were you guys around him or like, did you a little any, bit, um, a little bit again, it was back in hardcore days. Yeah, because I think Dean knew Roden, you know, because of Roden, and they played in a band, and you know, and he was relatively a, yeah, a, a, right. a, a person. You know, he was a, a, a you know, I mean, he, he had a DJ night. I mean, you know, you know, you could talk to the guy. You could, yeah, he played, he played Hey Ah, you know, for a whole year. 
<laughs> the, the outcast song and right. had fingerless right. gloves and and you know yeah Lindsay lohan like yeah. dancing at parties and stuff so yeah i mean it was a it was a time and place i mean it was relatively you know normal-ish like we all were you know yeah. just people playing yeah, music yeah. but um yeah, yeah steve like he was um he put out a record for panthers like an ep and he i mean he he did a great i mean it was no complaints i mean he did a great job um yeah but yeah he um it's funny what what's the name for that era now in the indie sleaze yes which i think applies <laughs> greatly yeah i don't yeah I, I don't i don't know what the time frame for that is or like exactly what it is but <laughs> well it's better than sponsor rock that was the other that was the other um Nice. term i had heard floating around out there and i was like "Ooh, that one just that one just hurts because that gets exactly to the core of what we were saying about like four loco or not four loco sparks the the pre four loco drink but it was you know i think there, were, <laughs> there was yeah. that it was the um, you know whatever last uh, last um george w bush term first obama term and the in the the economy was great and there was a lot of money out yeah. there. And I think there was a lot of marketing towards this like younger generation that we were in. And I think a lot of money flooded that time. And it was unusual, especially now. Yeah. I think, you know, looking back at it, yeah. I don't think those things quite exist on that same level now. I think it's changed. It's proven sure. it's also pre social media. So there's a lot of yeah. weird defining terms that at the time didn't seem that unusual or seem that strange. But now in hindsight, again, but, looking back at it, I think there was a lot of money flooding a creative world or a music world and um and and, and you could still sell cds you know so it was a time yeah. it was like before before streaming before social media there was still a sense of valuation of like whatever these young bands were doing and like bad haircuts and tight jeans it meant something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it had some kind yeah, of value. Yeah, yeah. it kind of had some monetary yeah. or cultural value and uh and i think that all you know it all seems so silly looking in the mirror with it but it was there was a time and place like shit i don't know man like those are questions people yeah. had to figure out like do we want do we want this shitty corporation to sponsor a thing or this shitty corporation to sponsor a thing yeah those are you know or I mean, no yeah, shitty that corporation. was like the and like you didn't need the money it's like you didn't why are we sponsoring a tour it didn't it's not like you had to spend a million dollars to tour you know what I mean? Like you could yeah. really get in the econo line and go drive around with your friends and a bunch of. <laughs> it was it was the, the last last gasp of the middle class musician. I think Ooh, also that sounds that sounds. I mean, poetic. just because like, <laughs> yeah. um, I uh, just because you know I think streaming when did stream like 2015 or maybe a little before. I don't then. know. The singularity it's gonna it's gonna we'll have to know this at some point but i remember like even like instagram you, i remember my wife we were dating at the time she's like what do you mean you're on instagram i was like i don't know it seems lame she's like look check it out you could like take pictures of your coffee and put a like weird like gross like brown filter on it i was like oh that is cool yeah. you're right i want to make my sepia toned coffee pictures look awesome i was like sure okay i'll do it yeah it's hilarious yeah i think i i think i ran out of gas after myspace you were done i think i was like yeah <laughs> It was like another platform, <sighs> but, um, yeah, yeah, it's a lot. I mean, I feel like it's, it's so much being in a band now is like so much more. It's so much harder. Yes. Like it they, is a they, whole different thing. You have to, I heard, um, what's his name? Bob mold say that, you know, you work five times as hard for like half the money or something. <laughs> oh, poor Bob. <laughs> I want to know <laughs> right. if you have to work you guys five times to, as hard. <laughs> Don't want to know you if you got to get paid half as much. <laughs> yeah, we played with Bob Did, a bunch. He was really cool. Yeah, he was yeah. really nice to us yeah. and very cool. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, that seems fun. it's, it's the Bob Mold show. Um, yeah, I'm sure. Well, I'm sure. Kip, this has been this has been amazing. Fascinating. I know we, did, we didn't yeah. hit on Cloudline Canyons enough, but you'll have to come back and we'll do, we'll yeah. do more of this. This has been yeah, really fun. Man. For sure. I appreciate you taking the time. Sure. Where, where do people catch up with you now and follow you? Where do you want people to with, um, find more information about, about the Red Scare reissues and the shows and whatnot? How, how do people keep in touch? Um, just Instagram. Um, okay. red, red what's, red your, uh, what's your handle there? Um, yeah, the Red, the red Scare Knoxville with underscores. And uh, okay. yeah, that's it. Cloudland Canyon. Cool. The regular Sweet. stuff. Shit, yeah. Well, this, yeah, is, this has been fantastic, dude. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. It's so good to talk to you. Yes. Thank you so much, Kip, for coming on. 
Wow, that was a uh, stroll down memory lane. There was a lot of uh, early aughts talk going on right there. Um, I think that day that Kip and I did this interview, we had a horrible uh, internet connection. So thank you for sticking through the interview. I think I edited it together as best I could. There's some Frankensteining in there. There was some, wait, are you talking? Am I talking? Who's talking now? There was a lot of those kind of moments, but hopefully I was able to uh, stitch together something that resembled um, a coherent uh, narrative in in our interview. I apologize, Kip, for uh, whatever kind of internet uh, gods were against us. But uh, thank you so much for coming on. And remember, go to uh, solidbrassrecords.bandcamp.com to buy the uh, Red Scare reissue. You can also go to Solid Brass... What is this? SolidBrassRecords.com to learn more about all the cool bands that they put out there. Um, Kip also has Cloudland Canyons. Um, And then, you know, why not listen to some Panthers while you're at it, too? Get get yourself a, uh, you know... Long, grow your bangs long, and put on a white belt, maybe some some white um, loafers, and uh, a, a suit jacket that's too tight for you, maybe a alternative apparel hoodie underneath it. Stand around with um, some not, not four loco, what was it? Those sparks. Yeah, you can drink some sparks with your. Uh, you <laughs> now I'm just being cruel, but I was there. I lived it. I was part of this whole mess of the early aughts. I don't know what it's what it's being called exactly now. Uh, indie sleaze doesn't sound right, but maybe that's right. Maybe that's how it's supposed to be. Maybe you don't uh, get to define these things. Those are those are the worlds we all lived in. Um, well, I appreciate it. Thank you. Find me on the Instagram, Randy S. Randall, and you can write the show at uh, hyphenate halftime at gmail.com. And let me know what you think. Send any uh, fact corrections. If I was incorrect about anything, I would love to hear from you. And let me know, and I will read your email on the next show. I think it was more like, more like, remember sitting on the tailgate crushing tall boys.